Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! And today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a Would You Rather game to talk about, a book about a mouse climbing Mouse Everest, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today, we have the one, the only, the amazing, Carson Schaefer! <laughs> Thanks, Tiberius. It's good to be here. Well, you're welcome. And Carson is a technology expert, speaker, musician, and consultant. Technology should use the air quotes for expert. Okay, well today we're going to start off with the video game of the week, and this is going to be a decision. Hmm. Of what type? Binary? I don't know. It's Tertiary. random. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is Pick a Side. Well, this is a game on the Roblox platform. Because it is on Roblox, you are able to play it on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. And it is free! It was made by Sir Ming. Sir Ming has made a lot of games. So most of you would know the game I like called Would You Rather. And yes, it is. So most of you know I like the game called Would You Rather. But that means I want to be sure a game is good if it has Would You Rather in it. So you join the game, and you move around and pick a side. Or you see the two sides fighting each other. Like marriage. (laughs) So, if you don't know what you rather game is where they ask two questions, and you select which one you would rather have. So, would you rather have a MacBook Air or an iPad? So you move over to the answer that you want to choose, and then everyone has picked a side, and then you get a weapon, and each side fights each other. Once you pick a side, you cannot go back. I enjoy how you get to get your own weapon and get money after each fight if you win. Well, I did not like how it's not fair when it's you versus everyone else on the server. (laughs) Well, I did like the difference of fighting each other at the end, but not the one real, like, one million. (laughs) Can you fight somebody with a MacBook for a weapon? I don't know if that's a weapon in the game. Well, I can pick a side 8 out of 10 stars because the visuals were good and I did not like when you are by yourself. That rocks. Over 40 years, Playhouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola County. Contact White House, Central Florida at 407-898-2483 or visit them online at lighthousecfl.org. The Tiberia Show would like to thank one of their dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl lettering to trophies and awards. The cool part about Custom Designs is they can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373 and tell them that Tiberius sent you. And now it's time for the book of the week. Geronimo Stilton, I'm too fond of my fur. Wait, I don't have fur. Well, this book is written by Geronimo Stilton. Let me read to the back of the book. In fact, Carson, would you like to do the honors? Sure. Yes, that's right. Geronimo's determined to prove he's a good friend, even if it means climbing Mouse Everest. Professor Paz von Vault needs him, so Geronimo sets out on an epic rescue mission with the help of his crazy family. You don't know anybody with a crazy family, do you? Yes. But what is that looming shadow following him, and why is Geronimo the only mouse able to see it? With only 140 million copies sold worldwide, as seen on Netflix. You ever hear of Netflix? Yes. Okay. They're part of other Geronimo adventures, such as Four Mice Deep in the Jungle and Paws Off, Cheddar Face. Okay. It's a rocking book. Oh, it is. And this is an air book that's worth one whole point. It is rated for third grade and first month. You can get this book at the library or on Amazon. I have 
really fallen in love with this series of books, and we again join Geronimo Stilton, who rents the Ruins Gazette newspaper. Well, he writes about his adventures as a traveler. Well, this time, Geronimo has become unhappy with his balding hair, and he gets a special hat that he found on TV to fix it. I need a hat like that. Well, there is one. I'll give you the website later. <laughs> So, then his friend asks for his help with Eddie. Well, trying to be a good friend and maybe get a scoop of the paper, he decides to help and go to Mass Everest, which is very, very cool. Well, there he finds a baby Eddie with his friend, the professor, and gave it medicine. Well, they are getting cold and was in the danger of freezing to death. And then... And? Well, I don't want to give away the entire story. So you have to wait till you read the book to get to the end. Would you help me find a friend that could give me hair? I already told you I'd give you a website. A, a website? Aren't, well, who could ask for more than that? <laughs> well, I'm too fond of my fur as, as 9 out of 10 stars for me because I really like that he was willing to travel all over the world for his friend. That is being a good friend instead of worrying about balding hair. Friends are more important. Although hair would be good. See, David Smith, law.com. You can call him at 407 801 2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help people. If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407 801 2667. That website again is C. W. Smith, law.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> Mid-State Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Mid-State Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. And now it's time for our interview of an interesting person. Today's this is going to be so much fun. Well, today we have the one, the only, the amazing Carson Schaefer. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> well, Carson is a technology expert, speaker, musician, and a beekeeper and a consultant. I do a lot of stuff. I have ADD. So it's kind of, look, a squirrel. And then we're going to go talk about squirrels. That's been my career. Okay. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? Oh, I've had a great time. I get to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. You weren't speaking yet when I saw you. And this is so cool what you guys have all done. I think it's yeah. fantastic. I'm having a blast. I feel like seven years later this happened. <laughs> So I have to ask, you are listed as being a consultant. What exactly does a consultant do? I made a lot of mistakes. I figured out my way around most of them, but I made a lot of mistakes. And when somebody's starting out a company, sometimes they want to hear about your mistakes that you made so they don't have to make them. So really what I do is tell people, yeah, you know, that seems like it would be a great idea. But, you know, I did it. A couple of friends of mine did it, and this is what happened to us. You might not want to do that. And they go, oh. So I try to give people a little bit of an idea of, they, they know where to go. They have a great idea. But sometimes it helps to just hear about someone's bad experience instead of doing it yourself. Yes. And bad experience in business means you lose a lot of money. Is that what happened to you? Yeah. Oh, I've made a lot of money, and I've lost a lot of money. And, oh, yeah, the highs and the lows. And, and talented. now you also are a technology expert and a speaker. Which job do you enjoy the most? You tell me. Which one do you think I enjoy the most? Beekeeping. As a technology expert, a tech guy or a speaker, what would you rather be? <laughs> Fix computers of people standing calling on the phone going, how come it's not fixed yet? Or you get to stand in front of a bunch of people and talk to them. And you can be funny and intelligent. Technology expert, so I can play games, so, I don't, so that I'm an ex expert at it. All right. Well, I'll stick with speaking, because I like that. I can talk about technology too. Oh, I can talk. 
Because it said that you are an expert. Really what I try to do now is I'm a technology communicator and I can ah. explain really difficult things to people who don't know about that. Okay. So how do you get started in becoming a professional speaker? One of the best things I've ever done in my life is walk through the door of Toastmasters. They taught me how to speak. It's a public speaking club. A lot of people join because they're nervous about speaking and you can learn with only a few people there and you can learn at your own pace. If you're a good speaker, they'll show you how to become really good. And I was a IT business owner who spoke 10 minutes at business meetings and wasn't very good. But I came to Toastmasters. They told me how to speak. They showed me how to be funny. They told me how to make emotional impacts with people. It completely changed my life. Both of my kids have had to be in public speaking clubs because of it. And my daughter now works as a professional speaker with the Brevard Zip. It's helped me more than anything else I've done in my life, I would think, Toastmasters. But what is the best part about being a consultant? I set my own hours. Okay. <laughs> nobody tells me how long I have to work, and the worst part is nobody tells me how long I should work. Okay. So when you were a kid, what did you want to do when you grew up? Did you always know that you were going to work in the consulting world? No, I wanted to be a forester. Oh. And I wanted to live in the forest, and actually now I do. I live out in Christmas. We have five acres and horses and stuff. And I live out in the middle of the woods, so I kind of got my wish. Okay. Well, what is the coolest part about being a professional speaker? I love helping other people learn how to communicate. Okay. So it says in your bio that you are an Air Force veteran. Thank yes. you for your service. You're welcome. Well, what is the best experience that you had while being in the Air Force? I got to fix computers on planes. I got to fly around on planes. I got to go to Central America for a year. It was fantastic. I fixed computers was my job, so I didn't crawl around in the mud and eat bugs or anything like that. Yeah. So actually, it was a lot of fun, and I learned a lot. Okay. Now what I thought, but well, what's the hardest experience in the Air Force? Working 48 to hours. 72 hours without a break getting 12 hours sleep and then doing another 48. Our motto was around the world, around the clock. And buddy, they live by both of those. Mm. So which kind of tasks does a consultant do on a daily basis? I make a lot of phone calls, Zoom calls, and I write. So do you need a lot of training to work as a consultant? I owned an IT company for 20 years and I've started I got spanked when I was 11 years old for tapping my parents' phone. I, wow, I was your age, a year older, tapping my parents' phone, and I got spanked for that from a 101 electronic uh, training thing. So, yeah, I've been doing it since I was 11. Wow. Well, so what is the hardest part about being a professional consultant? I like to do things myself to make sure they're done the right way and telling someone who doesn't even live near you and you can't touch anything and you have no effect over it is difficult. Yeah. So what is the first job that you ever had? I was a delivery boy for Rossica's Apothecary and I wrecked their car my second day. Was there anything you learned from that job to help you to be a better speaker or a consultant? Taught me how to be on time. So what is the most rewarding part about being a technology expert? Whenever somebody says that 5G is going to kill us all, I can tell them exactly why it's not going to. Well, now I see that you are also a musician. Does that mean that you can play me some music? Do you have a guitar? No. Do you have a virtual yeah. guitar? No. I can do this. Wait, let me shred. Do you like beatbox? <laughs> yes. Okay. So what's the craziest thing that has happened while doing your passion? On a G-rated show, if my wife's watching this, it's all been G-rated. I learned that alcohol, music, and standing in front of large crowds don't mix. It was a hard lesson for me. I'm sure my friends who were there would tell you it's the funniest thing they've ever seen in their life. Mm -hmm. Well, who will motivate or inspire you the most in following your dreams? 
my te- my electronic shop teacher in high school, Ernie Mayo. I took four years of electronic shop, started out, didn't know what a resistor was. When I finished, I could fix black and white TVs. Oh, wow. They had black and white TVs, you know, before these LCDs that you kids got. So what advice would you give my listeners if they want to grow up and be a consultant? Actually do it first. There's a lot of business consultants that have a degree and they go out saying, oh, I can help everybody. But do it. Do it first. Don't say, well, this is what I learned in school. Say, no, I had this company and we did this. I had a friend who had a company and he went from $2 million to $4 million by doing this. Okay. So if you're going to go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? I know what I would tell myself. Sell everything and move on a boat? And play guitar in the Keys and live happily ever after. Uh, So what was the biggest mistake you ever made and how did it change you as a person? I shouldn't have gotten out of the Air Force. I should have stayed in the Air Force. I let my ex-wife talk me out of it. And I think I would have ended up at Patrick Air Force Base doing flight testing on the C-17 and gotten to fly and done a lot of really cool stuff. And my life would have been completely different than it is now. So I do like my wife and my children, and I wouldn't have ever seen any of them. Okay, so when you are not working, what do you do for fun? I used to be a scuba diving instructor. We have a boat. We go out and go fishing. I like to go to the beach and bodyboard. I I was a beekeeper and apiarist, and we lost all of our hives due to colony collapse disorder and varroa mites, which are these little, it'd be about the size of having a softball on you. And it injects digestive juices into you and it liquefies your inside and then eats them. And that's what it does to the bees. So I was really bummed out after that and I cleaned up everything completely and put it away and I'm getting ready to bring it back. But we live in the country so we have horses, I play in a band, lots of stuff. I don't like to sit around. So do you still play music at least once a week? Oh, yeah, yeah. Even during COVID, we had band practice at my house outside under the big oak tree. And you had to wear a bathing suit because you'd go swim in a pool. Okay. So it says in your bio that you live on a farm. I did not know that there were farms in Orlando. Well, how big is the farm and what do you grow? Well, it's not inside the city limits. It's Five acres, and I'm learning how to kill all kinds of plants since COVID. I went outside, and I'm 64 foot by 64 foot garden, planted trees, planted everything. They looked wonderful. Carrots were this high. The, The green and the carrot itself was about an inch. And so I learned a lot from doing that. And we have horses, and we have pigs. That doesn't make sense. We have chicken. Yeah, that's what I said. Until we tested the soil. Tested the soil, I found out why. I meant the carrot. The soil was bad. I watered it well, but the soil was bad. So now we have to fix the soil problem. Try again. Oh, okay. So now my dad says that you like race cars. And you even used to work on a race team. Oh, can you tell me about that? Yeah. You ever hear the the long 24-hour race at Daytona? Not the 500, not NASCAR. Yeah. I used to work on a team that did that for 11 years with my son. And we got to work with Jeff Gordon. We got to work with a whole lot of superstars. Who were you? Like when the one that put the wheels up or... No, I was the guy who took care of all the drivers' RVs. It was the easiest job you could have on that whole team. I thought... Oh, my son did that. My son was a rear hose handler. Oh, yeah. You put on a fire suit, which is incredibly hot, and you kill yourself for 24 hours when you do that. I mean, more like 36. And it's they, they say it's a true test of man and machine, and until I really did it, I didn't really understand the test of man part. But it was yeah. it was cool to be right there. Well, what's the coolest part about being on a race team? Being right there. In the middle of all of it. Standing there, the car's right here, the team owners are here, the box is here, you're right in the middle of everything. I thought you were going to say that. But what's the hardest part about being on the race team? We, We had a car 
that was in 19, 19 laps down came out of nowhere and hit us. And the team had to change the radiator. And it was freezing rain. And their faces and hands were being burned from the steam coming off the radiator while the back of their head and their backs were being frozen by the rain. It was 4.18 in the morning when I looked up at the clock. Everybody had been awake for 36 hours doing that. We went out and got hot soup for everybody and coffee and brought it all back. But those are the hard ones when it just mm-hmm. goes on and on. Mm-hmm. Well, what is your greatest achievement in life? When I was 40... I had a heart attack and died. Came back on the second shock. Dad met me right after that. I wouldn't have had my life. I wouldn't have known my kids. I wouldn't have anything. And so my greatest achievement in life is life itself. Every day is a gift. You're not promised anymore. So enjoy the journey. Well, do you play video games? And if you do, what is your favorite one? Young man, when I was a boy, if you had more than eight bits, it wasn't any good. No, I haven't played video games for a while. My son loves games, (laughs) plays them all the time. I look at the metering on my internet connection, and his Steam account just lives above and beyond all things. I'm sure that's not a unheard of oh, thing in your house. Oh, that's a thing for me. <laughs> VR. <laughs> so, VR. Taking over the world, man. Yeah. Okay, so what is your favorite book to read? How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. The second most published book next to the Bible. Okay. I read it every year. So, can you tell me that one story? You know, remember, this is a kid show, but that one story... That you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on, you can tell me. Long ago, your dad and mom, and me and a couple other people in a little business group we were in, rented a booth outside. And we didn't know what we were doing. We were waiting for people to come by the booth. And your dad goes, I've had enough of this! Give me these brochures. Grabs a stack of brochures and walks out of it. He goes, hey, if you heard a business, uh, BRN, uh, Business Referral Network, we're a great group of businesses. You're in, are you in a business? And just goes up and down and brings everybody. Your mother is sitting there like this going, oh, I can't believe this. And your dad was out there up and down. And you know what he did? He got a ton of people to come into our booth. And somebody said, Does he know anything about marketing? And I said, if I decided for some reason that I wanted to wrap my horse like a car wrap, and I called your dad and said, hey, can you wrap a horse? 20 minutes later, he would call me back and say, how many hands high is the horse? So that's that's your dad. So do you have a website or Facebook for my listeners that want to follow you? Sure. I'm Carson Schaefer on Facebook. And we are translatingtech.org. Maybe. Okay. Well, thank you, Carson, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Yes, I can. The Tribia Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Airboat Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an airboat and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now to get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. Oak Ridge Gun Range is a family-oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades, gunsmithing, and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service. And firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at OakRidgeGunRange.com. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners. Well, thank you, Carson, for helping me with math corners. Today, we're going to talk about equivalent fractions. 
So I've been doing my IXL.com math exercises and we got into a number of problems that have to do with equipment fractions. So most people know that if you have any number that you can multiply by one and solve the same number. Well, when you have to find a common denominator in a fraction, you will always multiply by one represented by the number with the same numerator and denominator. In order to find a common denominator, well, you have to use this for more things. One of them is equivalent fractions. So what is equivalent fractions, you say? Well, equivalent fractions are defined as fractions with different numerators and denominators that represent the same value or proportion as a whole. So, this means that if you have a pizza cut in eight pieces, then you can say four eighths or two fourths or one half, that can still mean half a pizza. So, if it was really cut as small, you could say that 8 sixteenths is still half of the pizza. So, all of them are equivalent fractions. So, this is pretty cool because I can do this for lots of different fractions. Like, 1 third is the same as 2 sixths, 3 ninths, 4 twelfths, and other stuff. But they all still represent 1 third of the whole. So now you can make a chart like you would for a multiplication table and then you can see a pattern. This makes it really easy to find your common denominators. So Carson, do you not know what are and how to use equivalent fractions? Yes I do. You covered all the things they missed in engineering school. Yes. Well thank you so much Carson for your help with math corners. I was glad to be here and assist you. <laughs> And now it's time for the heart of a lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the heart of a lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. Well, this week we're going to talk about leadership. For me, I think leadership is the act of loving what is good, having self-control, and being disciplined. The qualities of leadership are providence, direction, organization, and being a positive influence on others. I have decided to try and get some of my tasks done early, and when I mean early, I mean four weeks early. Instead of doing one book review and one video game review, this week I did five. That makes a lot of discipline. That means for the next month, I have all the book reviews and video games done. And that, and that five for each. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, because I wanted to be organized, I got extras done so I could skip a week every once in a while. And it is handy just in case we have to do a double show. Well, it's really nice to have them organized and ready just in case. So, Carson, did you see or use leadership at all this week? Yes. I am, once again, the president of a fairly large local group in Orlando that meets half in person and half online. We're having a lot of the same problems the country is, and it's kind of divided. And I learned that if I say anything, half the people get mad. If I say the opposite, the other half get mad. But sometimes by not saying anything and just letting it continue on, it resolves itself. In fact, I'll say quite often, I've learned that without butting into it too deeply, I'll let it resolve itself, and it usually turns out a way that I'm pretty happy with. So I try not to dictate to everyone what they have to do. I'll take a consensus, okay. and it usually comes out the way I want it. So we should always try and be a lion strong in everything we do, shouldn't we? Absolutely. And that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing Carson Schaefer for being on my show. It has been so much fun talking with you today, and I hope in the future that I can visit one of your speeches. Hopefully you can. I'll be really glad. This has been fantastic. It's been great to come here and see everything that you've done. This is really impressive. I mean, when I was your age, I was playing in mud puddles, and I thought they were complex mud puddles. You're rocking, man. Keep it up. And be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Boy. The Tiberius Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer, Joseph Boy. Production editor, Pierre Laguerre. Green Room manager, Danny Boy. And your program host, Tiberius Boy. 
Tiberia's show is copyright 2018.